Lord, we come before the Word tonight with expectant hearts, and we thank You for this Word. We give You praise and honor. We thank You that the Word of the living God, the source of our faith, the source of our life, the one and only source of all our prosperity, all of our lives, spirit, soul, and body. And I'm asking you tonight, Father, for the anointing to rise up within me, live big within me, to bring forth this Word accurately tonight. And I'm asking you to move on the hearts and ears and minds of the people that they hear it equally as accurately and through these words, needs are met and works of the devil are, are destroyed. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory for it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles with me tonight to Acts chapter 1. We will be looking at several verses of Scripture here at the beginning. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Jesus is speaking, but you shall receive power, the Greek word dunamis. You shall receive power. This is the same word later on in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and dunamis, power. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now let's go to the book of Luke chapter three. Now remember Luke, the Holy Spirit used Luke the physician to write both the, the book under his name and the book of Acts. Luke chapter three, verse 16. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The Holy Ghost and His glory. The purging burning fire of God. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesse, I love it. Glory <laughs> to you. That Holy Spirit fire, Holy Ghost fire. Amen. Now then, let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Oh, Lord Myrtle, he's going to preach the whole thing tonight. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> In the beginning, God. That's a good place to stop right there. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Other translations say he moved upon the face of the deep waters. Or you could say he was moving on the face of the deep. Amen. God said, let there be light there was light. Young's literal translation said, and God said, light be, 
light is. Praise God. Now, tonight, with the help of the Holy Spirit and a whole lot of grace, <laughs> amen, I want to introduce you to the Spirit of power. Power Himself. Glory to God. He was moving on the face of the deep waters. He was moving. You know something? He's always moving. This is the Holy Ghost in glory. This is the Holy Ghost in fire. Holy Ghost power moving on the face of the deep. And God said, Light be light was. That's not talking about sunlight. No, no, no. You come down Verse 15, God, or 16, God made two great lights, the greater light uh, to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. And God set them in the, in the firmament and um, at the 18th verse to rule over the day and over the night and divide light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. This was the first day. This was the first second. Now, in 24 hours, I kept checking and, re and checking different resources for this, and I finally got a source where it's really, really accurate. At the end of the first 24 hours, there was six. Sixteen billion, ninety-four million, seven hundred and sixty-four thousand eight hundred miles of universe in one little twenty-four hour period, and it's been expanding at the same rate ever since. Glory to God, and it is almost unfathomable what's out there. From one statement, light be. <laughs> Over 16 billion miles in 24 hours. That's the God that's planning your life. This week, we will be, like I said, with God's help, developing a God inside me now consciousness. Renewing the mind to become God inside minded. Most Christian people are not. People agree that he's in there and they agree that all the things that I've just said, but still the, the awareness that he is in here, he really is in here. He really, 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 it's that same God and he's really, really in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My goodness, with somebody like that living on the inside of your body, 120 years is a snap. Without him, forget it. But we're not without him. But it's time to develop that God, he's in here. Oh, we're going to see some scriptures that just, oh my goodness, just thrill you through and through. Glory to God. Now then, let's look in the 14th chapter of John's gospel. John chapter 14. 
And look at the 16th verse. I will pray the Father and he shall give you <clears throat> another comforter <clears throat> that he may abide with you for ever. Forever. Forever. This same God. Forever. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, the high and the low, forever. It has absolutely nothing to do with how you or I feel about it one way or another. He said, I'm, I'm here forever. Glory to God. And, and now look at this, that even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. They can't see him. Neither knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and he shall be in you. Now this, this to our born again, Christian Holy Spirit ears, this is rather common, but to them, it was unheard of. He's in me. He just got through saying right here in this chapter, in the 10th verse, believeth thou not that I'm in the father and the father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the father that dwells within me, he does the works the Father that dwells within me. He's the one that's doing the works. The Father that dwells within me, he does the works. And then he turned right around and said something even more startling than that. In verse 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. This was startling information. Now, there's been a, a lot of discussion and talk about that. I want to show you from the book of Ephesians what the Holy Spirit has to say about the greater works. Would you like to see that? In Ephesians chapter three, beginning with the 14th verse, For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Of whom? Of the Father, the whole family, <coughs> excuse me, in heaven and earth is named. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. All right, I believe I received that. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, <coughs> that you being rooted and grounded in love. Don't go any further than that till you settle that. Rooted and grounded in love because faith worketh by love. And if you're not rooted and grounded in love, then Christ may be dwelling in your heart, but the faith isn't working. Amen. But if Christ is dwelling in your heart by faith and you're rooted and grounded in love, then you're able to comprehend with all the saints, what is the breadth, what is the length, what is the depth and what is the height and to know intimately, that word there is gnosko, the love of Christ. The love of Christ. That's God. Did you hear that? 
he said, to be able to comprehend, to understand. Actually, it's, it, that, that word there is, is more than just, just understanding. It, 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 it's more like working knowledge. Everybody in, this, everybody in this building understands how to go buy an airline ticket and get it. You may not want to do that, but you know how. You have basic understanding of that. You can go buy an airline ticket and go wherever they're going. But there is an understanding that's a step higher than that. And those of us that have been trained how to fly the airplane, there's more understanding there than just getting a ticket and riding on it. And so this is that way. It's, it's a step beyond just having this, you know, kind of a basic understanding. No, it's to know. It's to know. That word gnosko is the same word that is used. And a man knew his wife intimately intimate relationship with. So now we're getting somewhere here now to be able, oh, glory to God, to be able to comprehend, have working knowledge with all the saints, the breadth, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Why? that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Fullness. Say fullness. fullness. Filled with all the fullness of God. God inside minded to the full. To the full. Full. Filled with God. Not just having had an experience, but God inside consciousness. Hallelujah. Now unto him, here it is, here it is. We're talking about the, Jesus said, and greater works than these shall he do because I'm going to the Father. I'm going to send him and he's going to come and he's going to dwell you in fullness and dwell you in fullness. To him that is able to do exceeding Abundantly above all that we ask or think. I can read and I can study the miracles of Jesus. You go through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, 19 individual examples of people that were healed. People, I'm, and then you read other incidences where he not only healed, but he raised Lazarus from the dead. Glory to God. Where he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen. I can ask or think that. That's not beyond what I can ask or think. I've experienced a small part of that. I've experienced the, the dead raised twice. Amen. I can ask or think that. But look what he said. Look, look, this is a greater work. This is the greater work right here. Uh, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the dynamis that worketh in us. <laughs> Folks, it's coming. There are signs and wonders and miracles coming that this planet hasn't seen in fullness before. It has never seen them. Jesus started it and we're at the finish. It's coming. Greater miracles than what happened, praise God, when Moses stood in front of Pharaoh. I can ask or think that. Amen. And some great marvelous thing happens. Well, after it's happened, I can ask or think that. 
So it's going to continue to increase and continue to increase and continue to increase. And I want you to know those of us that will uh, uh, let and allow God to develop this on the inside of us and come to a place where we have a God inside me right now. Consciousness. He is in me. He is walking in me. He is operating inside me. He's working through me. He's working in and out and in and out and out and in and around. Hallelujah. And stop limiting the God of glory. Hallelujah. I'm excited about it, as you can tell. Because I tell you, I believe with every fiber of my being that we are so close. We are so glad. Hey, come on. We're not waiting on God. He's been waiting on us all this time to finally get with the program. Amen. Hallelujah. So now what will that do? Verse 21, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end, amen, so be it. It's not all that often that the great apostle puts a so be it at the end of a statement. But he said this, and that's, I tell you, that's huge. That is just absolutely huge. And he said, it will be. Amen. 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 Say it with me. So be it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what God said, light be. The apostle Bill, Paul said, okay, so be it. Glory to God. Now then, <clears throat> by having this beginning understanding, let's talk a little bit more about this great God. My, my, my. Isaiah chapter 40. The great prophet Isaiah in his writing said, verse 10, Behold, just the, the sentence right up before that, he said, behold your God. Look at your God. So we're going to look at him. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. And he asked a question. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and measured out heaven with the span. My span is eight and three quarter inches long. It's from the tip of my finger to the tip of my thumb. And I was privileged to be in, in the uh, study of a rabbi a number of years ago. We had a place for our meeting at night, but we didn't have any place for uh, our meeting in the morning time. And oh, I was so blessed. A rabbi so graciously gave his, gave his synagogue over to us to have our morning services and teach faith. And he said, Kenneth, just, just dig into my stuff in there, anything you want. And oh man, and he showed me things. And that's where I found the statement, light be, light was, amen. And then in that same material, it, it said, and he measured out the heavens with a nine inch span. Well, I couldn't wait to get a ruler and measure mine. <laughs> See, this is all talking about Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So now notice this now. We're looking at the God that's dwelling on the inside of you and dwelling in me. Who hath measured the waters in the hollow 
of his hand, measured out heaven with the span, comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure, and weighed the mountains in scales and the hills in a balance. Question mark. Who did that? Your God. One drop of water. One drop of water. And weighed the oceans of this planet. One piece of dust. How do you even weigh a piece of dust? (laughs) You're God. You can do that. (laughs) Amen. And weighed the weight of the mountains. Why? In a balance. He did this before the foundation of the world. Before he said, light be, light was. He already had it all planned. He had it all figured out. He knew exactly what the Pacific Ocean would weigh. He knew exactly what the Atlantic Ocean would weigh. And he knew exactly how that, when that weight was shifted during the tides going out and the tides coming in and the, and the oceans heaped up like mountains and then went back into the shore. And then he knew, you know, man and and his ignoramus ideas, (laughs) you know, you know how men are. One of them's wanting to dig a hole and the other one's wanting to build a mountain. So you, you sell the dirt out of the hole to the guy that wants the mountain. <laughs> Amen. So, and then all the wars, you know, and you're blowing up stuff and blowing holes in the ground and, you know, and all of that kind of thing and all that. And, and this, this whole planet's still just moving, moving right where it's supposed to go. A thousand miles an hour, 10,000 miles in one direction, a thousand miles an hour in another at the same time never has gotten out of balance. Gravity is still working. You never did get up one morning and they had a gravity alert. (laughs) No. And the earth earth kind of got lopsided and went, whoa, oh no, we slung about 800 people off the side of the earth. They just kind of sailed off out into the ether somewhere. (laughs) No, no. And God did all of that with a piece of dust and a drop of water. You think he can handle your car payment? (laughs) He's already got a plan for you to pay the car off. He already has a plan for you to pay that one off and get a new one. Amen. And never again make but one payment. He has the plan already. People are raised in this world as outside in people. That everything I need is out here somewhere. The government has it. My family has it. My, you know, my, my, my boss has it. But, and I need it. God has it and I need it. But it's all out here. No, not if you're born again. And especially if you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit the mighty spirit of power. Cause you not only now have God within you, you have a supernatural way of communicating with him that the devil absolutely cannot be a part of. He cannot understand one word you're saying unless you're speaking by the spirit directly to him, which is very outstanding. Amen. Though I speak with the tongue of men and angels and have not love, it's just but a lot of noise. But now wait a minute. Go ahead and finish up. Amen. The great 13th chapter and have that love 
though I speak with the tongue of men and angels and have love, praise God. I can move mountains, glory to God. I can communicate with the almighty God. I can communicate with angels. I can communicate with God. Hallelujah. Talk about an advantage. No wonder Satan has fought that like he has. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. That's the same God, the very same one that before the foundation of the world knew you by your name. The same one. Hallelujah. Now then, once we begin to be, be, uh, understand this. Now you know what Jesus was referring when he said, the kingdom of God is within you. We are no longer outside in people. We are inside out. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Come out from among them. Be ye separate, saith the Lord. I will walk in you. Think about it. And he's talking about your body. Of course, he dwells in your spirit. But hey, where is the dividing line between your body and your spirit? There's not one. Your spirit is not just a little ball in here. Your spirit is you. You do not look like your body. Your body looks like you. Your spirit once you got born again, it's just a whole bunch younger than your body. Amen. Amen. Cause you're renewed every day yes. and your body, as brother Keith was talking to us this morning about your, your body, your body is decaying, but your spirit man isn't. Right. Glory to God. Yes. And inside this man, I, I, I'm going to stretch your thinking here a little bit now. This physical body, <laughs> Get rid of the, the jar or the can idea that your body is this can and your spirit is in it. No. Your body and your spirit are one. And your soul your will, your intellectual parts, a part of your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This whole kingdom, the whole kingdom of God is in here. You tell me something, Jesse, God is in there. Yes, he, is. <laughs> he is in there. Take the limits off. Come on. I was wondering about the area called paradise before Jesus went to hell and paid the price. And then all of the, all of the first covenant saints were born again. Praise God. They watched that combat and they got born again. Glory to God right then. And he led them out of there, emptied out that area called paradise and moved it to heaven. They never knew the difference. Now they're physically in the heart of the earth in the upper region of Sheol, upper region of hell, but there was a gulf fixed there. They were not aware of that gulf. 
It was heaven to them. Heaven at that time was not fit for righteous human beings. It had affected everything up to, but not including the throne of God. Even the heavenly utensils of worship had to be cleansed with the blood of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Mm. Then it was fit for us to live there. Only two men. Jesus said, no man hath gone to heaven. Now let's put an expl explanation there. No man hath died and gone to heaven. Yes, sir. But two men were there in their physical bodies. Mm -hmm. They haven't died yet. That's right. Yes, sir. Are you listening to me? Of course. Now, Elijah and Enoch. I was questioning God about that. I said, what? How, how did you do that? I mean, they're, they're in that place uh, of soul, but, but it was heaven to them because it was called paradise. Amen? Amen? They were not born again, but they were the saints of God. They were saved. They just weren't recreated yet. <laughs> Nobody got that until Jesus was glorified. But now listen, I said, and he said, Kenneth, he said, I just repeated to you when I said that to you. He said, take the limits off, son. He said, quit thinking about the physical confines of the natural planet Earth. He said, I can put the state of Texas in a clothes closet in the spirit. Well, for a few seconds there, I kind of stumbled over that. And then I saw it. He said, you could just be walking into your closet and step over in the spirit and I could take you to a place and show you the entire state of Texas at one time and you'd still be in your clothes closet. Mm. But you would be spiritually conceiving it. You would be in the spirit. John was in the spirit on the Lord's day and he was seeing something other than the Isle of Patmos. Right, right, right. What he saw was far larger than that little island. But he was in the spirit. Now I want to take you to, uh, to another place. To get the spiritual concept, Paul and Silas in stocks, having been beaten, you know, within an inch of their lives, praising God, singing. They prayed, they sang, and they praised God. Obviously with a loud voice because the prisoners heard them. Where did an earthquake come from that didn't happen anywhere but in that jail? Earthquakes don't knock the bonds off your wrists. Now it'll shake things around, but if it, if, if, if it had been a, a natural earthquake, that jail would have collapsed or at least showed some damage somewhere or another. I'll tell you something else, that whole bunch would have run off too if the falls had, <laughs> wells had fallen down. They couldn't move. They were so in the spirit that the, the prisoners couldn't move. Their handcuffs, however they had them bound, fell off. Amen. You remember when Peter was asleep? Now they told him they're going to kill him the next morning. And talking about victory over death, I mean, he was so sound asleep that angel had to kick him and wake him up. <laughs> you know, he's he sure worried about getting killed in the morning, wasn't he? <laughs> there was no way they're going to kill him. And he knew it. Amen. But when they got up, what happened to his bonds? 
and the, the gate of the prison opened for them by its own accord. And there were no gate openers. Nobody had a remote to open the gate with. You understand what I mean? But it opened. We're talking about in the spirit. Let's go back now. I want to know where that earthquake power, I want to know where that glory came from. I want to know what did it, how, what, what, what was the source of it? Larry, it came out of Paul and Silas' spirit. They were the ones doing the praising. And, and, but our, our, our mental concept is kind of like, well, you know, the God and the angels and all just came down and shook the place. No, 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 no. Well, wasn't it the Spirit of God, Brother Copeland? Yeah, but where was the Spirit of God? He was in them. <laughs> They're the only two in there in which he was residing. Amen. Where did the curse that hit this planet where did it come from? It came out of Adam. That's right. Yes, sir. When the devil entered, yes, and the curse then, the devil didn't have the power to curse it. An angel can't curse a whole planet. He didn't have the power to do that. He couldn't. He's just an individual spirit. But once he got in that man, then he had the power to curse the whole planet. Wow. Think about it. Oh, glory to God. Do you know God could have filled you with an angel? After all, what's a demon possessed person? Huh? But he didn't. He could have created this special being just for you. He could have created a new special being for every born again Christian throughout the whole planet, billions and billions of them. Creating a billion creatures is no problem to him. He's created innumerable numbers. You can't even count the angels he's created. But he didn't. He wouldn't trust you or me to anyone but himself. No, no, no. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm going to do this job myself. They're mine. They're not my servants. They're my children. I, I, I want to be, I want to, I want to be their life for them. I want to be everything to them. Hallelujah. You just fall in love with him all over again when you begin to praise and worship with thoughts like this because he loves you so much. I said one time, I said, Lord, I hate the devil with every fiber of my pee. I said, how can I hurt him? I said, you know, I was in the natural man, that could get me something to club him with it. <laughs> I said, I want to hurt him. How do I hurt him? He said, do him like you do me. Don't do anything he says for you to do. <laughs> and at first I kind of tickled me, but then I realized he said I was hurting him. And it was no longer amusing. It hurts him. He just continually telling us all the time exactly what to do and how to do it and where to go. And we're, and, and we're not even there. <laughs> a number of years ago, not too long after we'd gone out in the ministry, left Old Roberts University and had been uh, in the ministry several years. And I got a call one morning and, and it was my spiritual father, Old Roberts. He said, um, Kenneth, I'm coming to your house. I said, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> when? <laughs> he said, Friday. Well, that was the next day. And he said, I'm going to spend the night with you. Wonderful, Brother Roberts. I hung up and said, Oh, Roberts, he's coming. He's going to spend the night. Boy, we hit that house. 
<laughs> I tell you, Gloria hit that house like a whirlwind, man. <laughs> you know, Oral Roberts is coming. He's going to spend the night. Glory to God. And so there were several things he wanted to do, but that he came and spent the night and it was up early in the morning. We went down early and he, he was already up in, 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 the, in the kitchen there. And he had his new, um, the manuscript to the book he had just written. And he said, I would like to read it to you and, and get your opinions on it and, and help me work with the final draft of it here, if you would. Praise God, <laughs> yeah. A brand new Oral Roberts book in my kitchen. <laughs> Man, <laughs> praise God. So, Man, man, it was a great book and a very successful book too, I might add. So, and there he was with that book and, uh, and his, his notepad and everything. And so we ran, got our Bibles and came down, you know, and his Bible was already open there. And, uh, and later I, I was talking about it and thinking about it and I said, oh my, how wonderful is that? that Oral Roberts himself came to see me, came to see Gloria, came to see my children, then got up early the next morning with his Bible and his new book and was ready to teach us out of that book. And the Spirit of God said, Kenneth, I've been here every morning. Where have you been? Uh-huh. Uh, asleep. <laughs> but over a period of time, thank God, I've changed that. Where it's every morning. Yep. Glory to God. With my partners, glory to God. Pray for my partners and, and, and spend time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The greater one. The greater one. All right. Are we getting somewhere? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll touch on another couple of things and then we'll close. And we'll, we'll be continuing this uh, throughout the, the week. Now then, two things to develop this, to develop a God inside consciousness. Let's look at John the 16th chapter. This hit me. Oh, I'd read it over and over again over the years. But then I really read it one day. And I kept going back over it and over it and over it. And it kept saying the same thing to me. Beginning with the 13th verse. Now, all of this, all of this started when he told them, it's expedient for you that I go away. For if I go away, the Father is going to send the Spirit. And he's still teaching on that. And he's still describing him. And he's still telling them who this is that will be living on the inside of him. And he said in the 13th verse, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, well, he has come. He has come. He's living in you. He's living in me right now. I want you to see what is on the inside of you. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear, that he shall speak. He is speaking. He's speaking. Day in, day out, he's speaking. Jesus is responsible for you. He is responsible for me. He's speaking every moment of every day about every thought, about every word, about everything that's going on around you, about the smallest things, the biggest thing. He's talking. He's speaking all the time. What are we listening to? 
Fox News. Come on. Not anything particularly wrong with listening to Fox News, but if that's all you're listening to, you're in a heap of trouble. You just don't have any answers. Every question that you asked yesterday, he was already telling you the answer. Everything that crossed your mind, I wonder what, I wonder about that. The slightest little thing, he knows the answer. You know, I, I wonder what sister so-and-so thought about that. He knows exactly what she thought about it. And if it's any of your business, he'll tell you. <laughs> if not, he won't. So don't bug him about it. <laughs> I want us to ratchet up and see what is really, really in there. What, and with whom we're dealing here. Whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come. He will glorify me. Oh, oh, look at it. Oh, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Open your heart, open your mind. For he shall receive of mine and shall or will show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Everything that God has belongs to Jesus. All of it. 100% of it, everything the Father has, everything the Father knows, everything the Father wills, everything the Father does, it all belongs to Jesus. Therefore I said, he shall take of mine and he will show it to you. Now, Jim Hilton, what does that mean to you and me? That means we can find out the answer to anything if we just just stay hooked long enough. Particularly if you'll use that supernatural language. You can inquire of things with God on a basis that you can't even get there in your natural mind. But you can in the spirit. There's things that you need to be asking. You don't even know how to ask them. Turn it over to him, let him ask it. Become in, in your prayer time. Become an instrument. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. In the hands yeah. of the Spirit of God. God created the heavens and the earth, and then he gave it all to men. That's the reason Jesus said in the 18th chapter of Matthew, he said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Heaven can't bind until earth does. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. God can't loose until earth does. It was a hundred percent communion between God and man. But then God broke it. I mean, man broke it off. There are things that God would do in this earth in a heartbeat if somebody were to ask him for it. Not knowing how to ask it, not even knowing what the question is, much less the answer. But you can yield yourself and say, Father, if there are things in your plans that need to be asked today by someone on earth in order for you to move and carry out your will, I'm your man. I'm your man. Put it in my heart and in my mouth, I'll speak it. If you want me to speak it in the natural, I will. If it's none of my business, but you want it asked, just give it to me in the spirit. 
And so as I pray today, I receive utterance by the Spirit of God, and I take my place as an intercessor and a supplicator to be used by your power, your Spirit. I get in on all the overflow of that. Because what's happening? While I'm praying, I'm edifying myself. <laughs> I get in on the edifying. I get in on the building up on my most holy faith. Why is it your most holy faith? Because, Jesse, you don't know enough about it to foul it up. <laughs> I like that. Man. I have a, well, I won't go into my track record, you know, but I, I have fouled things up. Have not because you ask not, and you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. Well, I'm tired of asking amiss. <laughs> Amen. Get over there in that area where I don't mess it up. Get on, get, base it on the word. Get the scriptures for it. Pray also that you interpret, then believe you receive the interpretation. Of it. it could come as, just right out in English. It can come as a conviction. It can come as a knowing. It can come uh, later and you didn't realize it was the interpretation of it, but that's what you prayed out in the spirit all that time. I remember, Nancy, I was in your church and we were dedicating that new building. <laughs> and I wasn't there to do the dedication of it. I was just there to en- enjoy the service. And I remember Ed turned around. And he said, Brother Copeland, you got something you want to add here? I said, uh, well, no, yeah, but here's this. Because <laughs> I, re- I didn't have a thing. And my mind was just about a zero. But the moment when I said no, then, then it just started coming out. That's the first time that I said, you know, Jesus' last name is not Christ. I hadn't even thought about that. It just came out my mouth. And they began to talk about it and talk about the anointed one and his anointing and translating and interpreting, you know, and so forth and so on and so on. That was the first message I preached on it. And I didn't know I knew it. Now, later on, (laughs) I'm praising God. And I saw right then, I'm going to have to start preaching this. This is something that God had planned for me to spend some time on. He said, Kenneth, you've been praying about that in the spirit for months. But you said back there, when you were praying for that, it's just a matter of course, because it's what what I pray. And, And I said, I pray also that I interpret He said, now, what you said tonight, it finally came out. That was the interpretation of it. And he said, now go on with it. Go on, study it. And he said, it's working in you. Now now develop it. That message was prayed out in the spirit before I knew anything about it. And I've learned over the years and a number of things have come like that. But if you don't ever spend any time praying in the spirit, or if you let the devil talk you out of it for one reason or other, religious reason or whatever it is, well then you, that's, that, that supernatural part of it, you're not going to be walking in. Well, if you're not walking in that, you're not walking in the edification either. Right. Now you remember the, the uh, Isaiah prophesying said with a stammering lip and another tongue, will I speak to this people? This is the rest and the refreshing. I heard Kenneth Hagin say this. If I had known it a long time before, it would have saved me a lot of problems. He said, the reason I was able to just preach night and day and just go and go and go and go. He said, I believe I received the refreshing and the rest of my spirit. And he said, once my spirit was rested, then my body would begin to rest. And he said, I refreshed myself like that. He said, I didn't want to go that hard. But back in those days, I had to. But he said, that's the way I did it. It was praying in the spirit more than I prayed in English. But I had to believe for it. See, if you don't know it, you can't believe for it. Whoa, but when I heard him say that, man, I grabbed a hold of that like a dog hitting a bone, brother. That's my rest. 
Mark, that's my rest, yes, man. I, I can refresh myself and build myself up praying on my most holy faith yeah. in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's a lot of things that in which I would lead and guide you if I had the privilege of your faith working in those areas. Now, there are areas that you don't even know how or why or when and the ins and outs of the problems and the answers. But if you would trust me by praying in your supernatural language and by praising and worshiping in your supernatural language, if you would trust me with it, then I will begin to reveal to your mind. Because you see, if you pray that you interpret, then your mind becomes fruitful. But as long as you're just praying in the Spirit and not exercising and joining the mind with that, then your mind, as I said in my word, saith the Lord, is not fruitful. But it should be. And I will bless it and I will illuminate your mind as you pray in the Spirit and refresh your spirit and strengthen and rest your spirit. It will also rest and strengthen your mind. I'll see to it, saith the Lord, if you'll trust me. That's what I said in tongues. Praise God. Praise God. Shall we just begin to worship right now? Just begin to worship. Just lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Brehenu, brehana nakla. La grete en en este brevedistos. La hora naga la na mari el leglin gana na Rome, 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 Rome. La la cana no conoro. La jesh des cas cas cana rata dak. Vrepenu no grosti secretastas. It's always appropriate. It's always allowed in the heavenlies. Therefore, it's appropriate in the earth for you to worship in that language. And as you praise and worship me in that language, it will begin to broaden and it'll broaden you spiritually. It'll broaden your mind. It will cause you to think better than you used to think. And it will cause you to have a, a, an activity in the spirit that you can, no, you, you, you can no longer ignore. And the things begin to take place on the inside of you that's working for you and will help you in times of trouble. And these days are wonderful, saith the Lord. So begin to take full advantage of them and you'll know things and understand things that you didn't know you know. <laughs> Your spirit knows more than you know. I said, You're, you, more, you know more than you know. <laughs> because your spirit man, your spirit being has understanding that your mind hadn't caught up with you. He's in there. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Let's stand and give him praise. Glory to God. Glory, 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 glory. The evidence that he is in you is not how you feel or don't feel. Deuteronomy 31, 6 through 8, John 14, 16, Hebrews 13, 5, he will never leave you or forsake you or fail you. Glory to God, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And he's there forever and ever 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 and ever. And ever, and ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. And whatever problem you run in tomorrow, he's already got it fixed. Whatever problem you run into next week, he's already has it fixed. Whatever trouble your family gets into, he's already got it fixed. Pray in the spirit until you get the answers. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I, I don't care what Gloria, <laughs> Gloria and I could come to my mother and we'd say, uh, well, you know, what do you think we ought to do about this? The, it, it, 99 times out of 100, she'd say, hit it in tongues. <laughs> hit it in tongues. <laughs> hit it in tongues. <laughs> Amen. That is her answer. <laughs> Amen. You just pray in the spirit till you find out what to do and then do it. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I said, thank you, Lord Jesus. Your healing is already in here. It doesn't have to come from heaven. The healer lives inside you now. All that it takes to deliver your body, to deliver your mind from any kind of trouble. I don't care what it is. All that it takes to do it is on the inside of you right this second. <laughs> it's when we begin to acknowledge that He is in here and He loves me and He's more interested in my being delivered and healed than I have any idea. Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody came into this meeting tonight with a horrible, terrible, racking cough. And you've coughed and coughed until your ribs are sore. But in the name of Jesus, I declare that cough is over with right now. And over the period of the next three days, it will become less and less and less and less and less and it'll be gone. And you'll say, where did that thing go? It is gone. I'll tell you where it went. It dematerialized by the power of the living God that's living on the inside. You want me to tell you really what happened? That cough ran into the fire. Holy Ghost fire. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ha. Huh. Dan Stratton, would you step up here, sir? You and Ann, please. You've just entered into the next, not the final, but the next stage of your ministry. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. You've known me as your healer. You've known me as your financier. You've known me as the great one, you've known me as your deliverer, but you're about to know me as the great resurrection. <laughs> and you're going to see things and understand things in the power of his resurrection. And a calmness and a peace is coming into your ministry, both of you, that you've not known up to this time. You've had, there's been things even back before 9-11, when you were surrounded by death and carnage during that massive attack. No one in your church was injured, but it was rough. It's a hard way to go. And a lot of turmoil. And a lot of it is still hanging around. <laughs> but the peace, it passes all human understanding has been released from, from heaven through the earth to you both. And you'll understand more and you'll see more and it'll be like you're standing with Moses on the top of Mount Nebo and you'll see the entire promise of your ministry for these are the days of his resurrected power and you'll know him and you'll know him in the power of his resurrection. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, praise you, Lord Jesus. 
praise and worship you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Yes, I'll do that. Yes, I will. Receiving the supernatural language is the easiest thing you have ever done in your life. Jesus is God's gift to the world. He's God's gift to the sinner. He's free. Free gift. The Spirit of God is God's gift to the church. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. And if you're born again, if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you haven't, that's the easiest thing you ever did. Just say, Jesus, <laughs> take my life and do something with it. Come into my heart. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'll tell you what let's do. All of us, let's pray that. Anyone in here that's never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, raise your hand right now. Anyone at all? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, praise God. Hold your hand up there, keep it up. Let's all raise our hands along with them. Now we're just going to lead them to the throne of grace. You may, you may be sitting there saying, Brother Copeland, I don't really know for sure. I, I mean, if my body just, just laid down dead right now, I'm, I'm really not sure what would happen then. Well, you will be in, in about 30 seconds from now. <laughs> Amen. Well, Kenneth, it, how could it be that easy? Let me tell you something, darling. It was not easy. There wasn't anything easy about it. Jesus had to go to hell and buy this. He did all the hard part. The one and only thing he could not do is pray your and my prayer. We have to accept it and believe it and receive it. Hallelujah. Put that hand up there again. Oh God in heaven, I believe with all my heart that God raised you from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. I repent of sin. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. All of my past is gone. And you're my future, Lord Jesus. I believe I'm saved. I believe I'm born again. I take it right now. It's mine. I'll not turn it loose. Now that I am, I'm asking you, Jesus, fill me to overflowing with your Holy Spirit. You said it. Luke wrote it down. You being evil, you being evil. Give, good give good gifts to your children. Your heavenly Father, your heavenly Father will, much more will much more give the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost to, those that ask to those that ask him. Well, I'm asking, well, I'm asking. And, I'm and I'm receiving. You said it. I believe it. I have it. I thank you for it. Now I fully plan to speak with my new prayer language. Thank you for giving me the utterance. I'll make the noise. You make the words. Ha! 
ha 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 No, get up my whole book for a minute. No, 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 La gran dolor se le brite se la la grama hala la borromo la borroman que la borla para la galama la braha hala vi that's gonna book landa make a joyful noise unto the lord lift your voice and praise his name roma lo romani hallelujah oh hallelujah Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, dear Master. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Nancy Dufresne, seems to me like the Lord has something for you to, to say right about here. Would you come, please? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I've known Nancy for many, many years. Watched her ministry and watched her great church grow and and uh, have ministered there numbers of times. And she walks and stands in a high spiritual office. Yes. So whatever the Lord has for you, Nancy, just go ahead and obey the Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Mosto goya hebeti. Mosho to pe enstinkia. Mosho te kikie. Oh, sto goye. <laughs> oh, we thank you, Father. Yes. We thank you. Yes. Oh, we thank you for that divine help. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, for that divine help. Ha ha, sto goye. There's many in here right now tormented with depression, mm. harassed in your minds, and this sense about you is it doesn't seem like my mind is my mind. There's freedom right now. I yes, praise God. Thank you. There's Jesus. freedom right now, right where yes. you're at. Just lift up your hands. The man of God told us tonight what to do to stay out of that place. Yeah. And that is by the Spirit, enter into the rest and the refreshing of God and get out of that mental arena and get in the spirit arena. So tonight, those of you harassed, troubled by depression, right now, right now, lift up your hands. Those of you, those of you that are around them, reach out your hand to Those, those that are standing there with your hands raised, 
I speak to you right now. Be free in Jesus' name. Yeah. Satan, you yes. take your Hallelujah. hands off their minds. Hallelujah. You take your hands off their lives. You take your hands off their bodies, off their families, off their homes in Jesus' name. Yes. You yes. be yes. free yes. 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 in Jesus' name. You be free in Jesus' name. Now, those of you who had your hands raised, raise your hands and say, thank God I'm free. Thank God I'm thank free. God I'm right free. now I'm free. Thank, thank God you I'm that free. I'm free. God, thank I'm you, free. Father, that I'm free. Thank you, Father, that I'm free right now. I'm free right now. I'm free right now. And I have divine help on the inside of me. Yes, glory I to have, God. I the have greater one. divine help on the, the inside one. of me. And I yield to that help right now. Praise so lift God. up your voice and yield to him right now. Moshto Korea, worshiping your deliverer. Worshiping Thank the one Lord. who makes you free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All kinds of addictions, drug addictions, alcohol, pornography, all kinds of addictions are being delivered right now. You're being delivered. Anything that's hounding you, you're being delivered from it right now. You're being set free from it. You've been free all along, but right now you have activated that freedom and that spirit can't stay with you. Can't stay on you. Can't even stay in your presence. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So just lift your hands. And like Pastor Nancy said, say it out loud. I'm free. Thank God I'm free in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 